We have a lot of news to cover, including a first look on the first Enchanted for Shimmering Skies, a bunch of new cards to review, and the first look to the brand new TCG D22 Collection Edition. So let's do this! What's up Illuminators, it's Charlie and Matthias back with more Shimmering Skies news. As promised, you're seeing our faces a lot sooner than you normally would, so let's dive right in. Let's do it! Okay, so first up, and as we and I think many people predicted, we have Donald Duck Pieslinger, the first enchanted revealed for yes. Shimmering Skies, and it is a beauty. It's insane, insane, insane. It's everything we wanted for and more, and it's yes. like proving out that beautiful art that we were expecting for this set, when we start hinting across different arts. We won't get into details yeah. into here, jump on our Instagram, have a look, but we have a guess of two other Enchanted yes, that yeah. are coming just based on the illustration on its own. I think it's really easy, uh, really interesting, really yeah. easy, really interesting uh, to see the art style because there was a lot of controversy, uh, do we want to say, about the, the Enchanted from the previous set. Some people loved the, the dark background yes. uh, on the art style, some people didn't love it quite as much. Yeah. We were big fans, but it We is, did like it, but it was very muted, it I was think, very by muted, comparison. Yeah. And, so. But now you see this, this is the complete opposite end of the spectrum. Yes. It is colorful, galore. Festive. It really fits with the theme of this yeah. set. I just love it. I think it's what we were missing, yeah, to be yeah. honest, to, to have a lot of excitement every time a new Enchanted come out. Yeah. And that makes sense. I always approach in different art direction for every enchanted set. Yeah. So super, super cool choice here. Some things to look at that. Should we observe a few things? Yes, let's do it. I think what is interesting is is the full size art. If you think about the previous enchanted on the bottom, you see the border. So this is actually fully, uh, well, around the text, but full art. Similarly to what you're going to see on the D23 collection we're going to talk about just in a bit. As well as the, the Lock on a Challenge the prize promo cards, cards as well. Exactly. So that's super exciting. Uh, more things to see, the border, the text, the formation is all very different than what it we're is, used yeah. to look at. But it also makes me question some of those things in an exciting way. So if you look at the classification, Floodborne Hero Knight, uh, for some reason is left-centered. So uh, left, left aligned, aligned. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> instead of uh, centered. Which also makes me wonder is that was like a quick solution for maybe a card that has a long mm. string for the classification, such as the new Seven Dwarfs, we're going to talk about it, or Snow White. Yeah. So some hints, maybe we're going to get those as Enchanted as well. I'm definitely looking forward. And sorry I'm talking more than Charlie because I love Donald Duck, I'm obsessed with that and I wanted a Donald Duck Enchanted for so long. But another thing here is we do miss our hidden Mickey. <laughs> I think the mustard yes, and the ketchup the melted. Has melted away. Maybe there's another one in the card. If you see one, let us know. But tell us down in the comment section. Are you as excited as us with this card? Yes. Are you excited with this new approach for the Enchanted? I can't wait to see more of them. I just can't wait. It's yeah. now it means everything yes. to me, and I need to have all of them <laughs> because this is amazing. Good job, Irvin Burger. Good job to Gabriel Quinn. Yeah. This is out of this world. Thank you so much for doing this. So the next thing we have to look at is the TCG D23 Special Edition Collection that is coming out. That's that is a, a mouthful. mouthful. <laughs> I think I probably said it wrong as well. <laughs> it's all good. So really, this is very exciting for those collectors and people are like, obsessed with having exclusive uh, cards, really, with yes, that yeah. big logo of D23. Yeah. Obviously, as the name says, uh, this is something you can acquire if you are attending this year's D23, but this time, differently than the previous year, you can actually get that at seven different locations yeah. around the world, which are, if you want to go through it, Charlie? Yeah, so it's the Disney store in London on Oxford Street. Not in Oxford, it is in London. <laughs> in London. It is a great store. It, uh, the Disney store in New York City, which is our closest one, so we might try and get yes. there. There's going to be a pop-up event, a Disney pop-up event in Melbourne, Australia, for yeah. our Australian fans who were who recently just got look on exactly as well as the disney store in dublin in the republic of ireland yes. and then outside of that it's also available at disneyland paris at disney world and at disneyland uh, florida <laughs> california yes so disneyland pretty much california. the different <laughs> disney parks across usa yeah. and uh france it's worth noting uh if you do get from disneyland paris i think it's five per person so that's quite a bunch, yeah. actually, by comparison. Most of the other places are two per person, as far as we know. There's no sales online, so that Disney website, you won't be able to get that, at least as of announced so far. But it's very excited. Yeah. Just line up for that. I don't think it's going to be as... Uh, it won't have as much stock if we have to guess, as much as the D100. So Absolutely, it's very yeah. exclusive. Go get it. And the important things to know, it's out on August 9th with the release of Shimmering Skies yes. and it retails for $100 US. Or $99.99 .99 USD. <laughs> uh, it comes with set, uh, six cards, one for each set, including some spoilers from Shimmering Skies and set six. 
Uh, we can go through the list very quickly, shall yeah. we? Yeah, so for the first set, we have the Mickey Brave Little Taylor. Yeah. Then we have Cinderella Stouthearted from Rise of the Floodborn. Then we have Ursula Deceiver from uh, Into the Inklands. From Ursula's Return, we have Bruno Undetected Uncle. Then for set five Shimmer in Skies, we have a spoiler for Sugar Rush Princess. That's the Vanellope herself. Yeah, so the card hasn't been officially announced yet, so we'll wait to review that one. And then, last but not least, a taste of set six. We have Oswald, a brand new character, a brand new card that we're going to see in the yet unnamed set six of Lock On. Yes, I hope it's all black yeah. and white. No, I'm joking, yeah. but I do love that character. We couldn't be more excited. <laughs> exactly. As I said, we might try and make the trip down to New York. It's about we're gonna have to do six it. hours from us here in Montreal. But Shimmer yeah. Sky is releasing. We're going there. We're trying to release the visa at the same time. It's we'll going to be chaotic, we'll but it's worth it. We'll do a on the road or Exactly. Or something. We'll be careful, though. And now, Should we go to card? Yeah, let's announcement? talk about the cards. Let's do this. Okay, so starting us off in Amber, we have Sven Rindia Steed. He's a four cost inkable 3-3 three, three, that quest for two with the ability Reindeer Games. When you play this character, you may ready chosen character. They can't quest or challenge for the rest of this turn. So this is kind of a new mechanic, not a new mechanic, but it's a, it's a new mechanic in Amber, Amber, the ability to ready characters. We, of course, have seen this in Ruby so far. It's on characters like LeFou, on the uh, Shield of Virtue that let you ready a character and they can't quest, mm -hmm. but they can still challenge. In Amber's case, they can't quest or challenge, so it seems to fit with the flavor of Amber. It's yes. more about protecting your characters, but you can also sing with them, which is another yeah. another thing we see in Amber. So you could potentially sing with an aerial. And device. I think it makes sense if they still wanted to have that kind of ability associated to Ruby, but giving a lower version of that for Amber and yeah, prioritizing yeah, yeah. singing and protecting. It makes totally sense, and it comes with a bit of a card if Sven. Yeah. I think that's probably sitting right next to the... Uh, the Christoph, Christoph yes, card that is absolutely. the promo card. It looks like they're next to each other. Yeah, so this card is super cute, and uh, it has good stats as well. Like three, three quest for two. It's it's not bad with a, a fun ability attached to it. So I think mm. this is quite a quite a neat card. Pretty. And as we said, this is a mechanic we're seeing now more in Amber, and we have a song, Try Everything. It's a four-cost inkable, and it also has a similar ability. Remove up to three damage from chosen character and ready them. They can't quest or challenge for the rest of the turn. So once more, seeing this effect making its way over into Amber with this card. I think, personally, this is a little bit maybe less interesting than Sven. It doesn't feel like it's doing a lot. Mm. We've seen this damage removal ability a lot in, in Amber and currently, aside from healing your characters, which is a nice benefit. There aren't really other many other payoffs for it, aside from something like Rapunzel, mm. Gifted Artist, which is letting you draw cards. I said to Matthias that it would be such a cool effect if it did all of that and let you drew a card. <laughs> but maybe maybe it would be too powerful. You're asking too much. <laughs> so, so I think the only thing I, I can say is we're going to look at some more cards in Emerald that reward your opponent if you have damaged characters. So maybe healing is going to be the natural answer. It's a way to protect you from that because they are already aggroing their way to victory. Yeah. But a card we are very excited <sighs> is Duck. Daisy Duck Donald's Date, a one cost, uninkable one for that quest for two. The craziest stats on a one cost character. And Lilo she, who? Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> and she has the ability Big Prize. Whenever this character quests, each opponent reveals the top card of the deck. If it's a character card, they may put it into their hand. Otherwise, they put it on the bottom of their deck. So this, of course, reads like it could be a benefit for your opponent. But I, I think what is actually interesting is it's going to be getting rid of those song cards, those action cards, yes. those location cards that aggro decks in particular struggle with. Especially against Steel. Especially against Steel. Yeah. So I think this naturally find uh, like Daisy naturally finds her place in aggro decks. This is a card that's really going to benefit aggro decks who are looking to close the game as quickly as possible. If your opponent draws a few character cards, maybe it's not too bad, but you're really getting rid of those actions which can yeah. cause you a trouble. Imagine you're being able to start so early with uh, the cost of one, removing uh, grab your sword yeah, yeah. right in the beginning, surviving with Daisy for two to three turns or even more. Yeah. You see there are other cards yeah. that can protect her. So I love this card, to yeah, be honest. The, it's almost too overpowered. It, it feels like it, the willpower is very high. And yeah. as Matthias alluded to, it really is power creeping a card like Lilo making a wish yeah. out of Amber aggro decks. Yeah. Maybe both of them will be played in the same yeah. decks, but I think this card is absolutely amazing. One of the best cards I think we've seen so far this set. And it seems so simple on the surface. Mm. Next up, we have Vanellope Von Sweets, Sweets Mechanic. She's a two cost inkable 2 2 that quests for one. And she has the ability whenever this character quests, chosen opposing character gets minus one strength this turn. Uh, it's an ability very similar to Set 4's Cogsworth Major Domo, 
who also lowered a character's strength on play. A card that didn't see much much play, and that's usually a heuristic we apply when we see a new card. It's, yeah. is there something that exists already? Does it see play? Mm. And it doesn't in the case of Cogsworth, so will we see it with Vanellope? I think with Vanellope, at least she has the classification of a racer. She has the classification yes, yeah. of Principessa or Princess, yeah. right? So, so maybe those synergies mm -hmm, will come together mm -hmm. with the other cards. But again, I don't get very excited when I look at that. Yeah. Except for the beautiful outfit she's wearing. She is. Her whole uh, candy corn uh, yeah. style and coloring. <laughs> yeah. So we're all for that. I think it's a big, nice approach and yeah. record run. And, and I think maybe in a Amber Ruby deck, she has synergies with things like Brawl and yeah. Madame Medusa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But requires a bit of setup and I think that maybe that is, is what's going to prevent her from being played yeah. but another cool card another racer so we'll be building some Wrecker yes. Ralph decks soon so that's all of the cards for Amber let's update the tracker I just we think here. it's down here we always, we always forget get the, mirrored the cameras wrong. mirrored but it's just so there, there. Yeah, so yes. updating those cards and then we're going to run straight over into Amethyst starting us off on Amethyst it is our first Amethyst legendary card for this set Genie, main attraction, a 7 cost, uninkable 5-5 five, five that quest for 2, and he has the ability Spectacular Entertainer. While this character is exerted, opposing characters can't ready at the start of their turn. That's an interesting So that card. is a very, yes. very interesting card. There's a lot to unpack there. Yes. But basically, it means that Genie is going to be creating some pretty big pressure on your opponent. They are potentially going to want to not quest. Yeah. Because if Genie quests, then he's going to... Oh, if, or even attack if Genie, or anything. Yeah, right? if, they Genie ends, yeah if Genie ends uh, your opponent's turn exerted, then yeah, he can really slow you down, really disrupt your board. Yes, yes. Yeah. And there are, of course, ways you can make Genie exerted on his first turn. You don't exactly. need to wait for his second turn. You could use uh, another Elsa to give him Rush. You could use the Vitalisphere. Yes. So he enters play and he would be exerted, which will then be a little bit of a surprise for your opponent. And then, yeah, once he's on the board, you've just really got to deal with him. There are, There's nice synergy with Tiana's Palace. Yeah. If you put Genie there, then he can't be challenged. So that makes it even more difficult to get him <laughs> off the board. His stat line, he, he is a 5-5. Five, five, so it means he is vulnerable to the likes of Along Came Zeus. He can be targeted with World's Greatest World's Criminal greatest Mind. Criminal. But he is safe from Medusa, which yeah. is always an important thing. And I think that's the one you see the most. You don't see much of the other cards. Well, Zeus, yes. Yeah, yeah. But the world's greatest criminal mind. I'll be surprised it's becoming, if you start you know, it's seeing more. more. Yeah, more probably. There's more yeah. reasons to use that. Yeah. Uh, but it's definitely interesting. And I think it's a beautiful card. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On to the next card, we have Anna, Enthusiastic Disciple. A three cost, uninkable, one three, that quest for one. And she has the ability increasing powers. When you play this character, each opponent chooses and exerts one of their ready characters, which is a very cool ability. Mm. We've seen a lot of Elsa cards where you choose. And this is a case where with Anna, she's making the choice onto the opponent, which is good because it means it gets around things like Ward. One of the interesting things is they have to select a ready character. So you often see with something like Bucky, of course, less of a, a problem going forward, but Bucky, your opponent would often keep Bucky ready and yes, everything else that's exerted. the one you would keep so yeah. now anna would force them to exert that bucky and then you can challenge him and that's that's actually really interesting because again you could not in that case scenario choose bucky your opponent could choose anything else but mm -hmm. because everything else will be exerted not bucky, most of the time most exactly, of the time yeah. i almost wonder if they designed this card as an answer to bucky until they realized bucky had to be erupted yeah. i think an answer to what i think maybe, it makes sense it, yeah yeah you see that kind of same behavior right with something like cogsworth yeah opponents usually won't exert him with prince john so this is a card I think could see some play if one mm. becomes a bit of a, a menace in the meta game. I think, I know that I say that a lot, but I, this is one of my favorite arts, I think, for this set. It is amazing. It's so yeah. beautiful. Uh, and it happens a lot of Anna cards, surprisingly. The art is A lot of the Anna cards, yeah. like, who is the best artist for Anna's? And they get that. It's so a good job, Leonardo. Yeah. Yeah. And then next, uh, last but maybe least in Amethyst, <laughs> we have Monstro Will of a Will, a five cost, five, uh, five cost inkable, five, six. That quest for one, vanilla. We've said it many times, you know, we're not big on vanilla cards unless they have something really good going for them. So this to me feels like very, like the stats aren't anything special. It's basically a carbon copy of Cerberus, but for uh, Amethyst, Amethyst yeah. it's just a clone. Uh, really, for people that doesn't know, if you don't know, this is from Pinocchio. I did hear some questions, so I want to clarify if you're not aware. Watch the movie, the movie is beautiful. Uh, and there's also, if you see it in the narrative, they mention Azuret, 
uh, as a right. As see? you right, see, yes. We wonder if that is a location in this Lorcana that we get to know. I don't remember if that's from Pinocchio. Yeah, I if don't, it is, just tell me, pull my I, ears and tell me. In the I don't believe it is a location from yeah. Pinocchio, so it could be a tease of something that's, Probably, that's coming yeah. It could be nothing, but it could be be nothing. <laughs> I think the fact that it is uh, it is a proper noun with the yes. capitalization on the name there that it might Something have some really relevance. Cool. Nice to see monster around. Absolutely, yeah. and then now we're going to update the amethyst tracker to see all of the cards in there, including our first legendary. There you go. And now we'll go over to Emerald. Emerald. So we're starting off with a hyena. Finally, more hyenas for the hyena synergy. We have Ed, Hysterical Party Goer. He's a four cost, uninkable, two four that quest for three. And he has the ability Rowdy Guest. Damaged characters can't challenge this character. So, yeah, we've seen one, one whole hyena so far, which was Shenzi in set three. And we also saw Rafiki, Mystical Fighter in set three, who had some synergy with, uh, with hyenas. He would take no damage from the challenge. And now we're seeing our second hyena character. We've got to assume it's the second of many more to come, but right now, so, yeah. uh, on his own, I think Ed is actually quite a cool card. Two four questing for three is good stats on a on a four cost character, and the ability is quite cool. It is, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you could ping all of your opponents with something mm -hmm. like Tinkerbell or grab your sword, and now Ed is protected from mm -hmm. all of those challenges. So yeah. I think that is quite cool. And if you have seen, I just literally noticed there is a very in your face hidden Mickey oh, on the yes. tree trunk on the bottom left. That is true. So that's cool. Keep an eye on all the hidden Mickeys that we've been exploited so far in our yeah. video. Probably be just there, <laughs> but watch it out. And next in Emerald, we're going to go over to <laughs> Iago Flit Thick Flamingo. He has a four cost inkable two four that quest for one. He has evasive, as you would expect from something like someone like Iago. And he has the ability in disguise. Whenever this character quests, you may appear two less for the next action you play this turn, which I think is cool. It can make actions that maybe on their own are a bit, mm -hmm. are not as strong, a little bit better. Something like Finders Keepers, which was a card we saw revealed already for this set, a five cost action that lets you draw three cards. It suddenly becomes a lot better if it's a three cost action that lets you draw three cards. So I see something there. It could be, it could be a nice one, but the fact that it's an ability that requires Iago to quest the fact that he has a 2-4 means he is going to be quite easy to remove yeah. if your opponent's worried about you potentially playing some actions. I still can't put my mind to just fight Finders Keepers in any way. But yes, fair enough. <laughs> still that, that, yeah, I that still card. hate it just because there's a better version of that for Amethyst, at least in that Amethyst color, yeah. right? Or the ink. And then next up we have Robin Hood Punch. Archery Competitor. He's a 2-cost inkable 2-2 two -two that quests for 1. And he has the ability Masterstroke. When you play this character, if an opponent has a damage character in play, you gain one law, which is more payoff for this kind of archetype that's emerging, that's been slowly kind of building up over the sets that really pays off emerald cards and opponents with damage on them. So I think there is going to be a stronger mm -hmm. emerald steel archetype based around it's this. It's a scary one, to be honest. It is yeah. scary, it is scary. Yeah. It's cool that Robin really, he, he can almost guarantee you law if your opponent has damage. Mm -hmm. A little bit like Merlin Goat. So I think there is something quite interesting there. At a two cost as well, like even if you have to just play him as he is, it's not too bad yeah. in the stat line. And you're gonna be seeing, we're gonna be showing another Robin Hood. We showed Absolutely. last week the location, yeah, yeah. Sherwood Wood, there's Robin Hood's bow, and he serves as a shift for the big Robin as well. Exactly. So there's a lot of functionalities for him here. But can I just say how big archery competitor is in German. <laughs> Look it's at the name of the word. card. It is a very I won't word. even try to pronounce, but he almost will run out of space. And, and hopefully but... archery competitor is the actual translation. <laughs> I hope so. These yeah. are all taken from Mushu reports. So, Thanks, Mushu. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for the translation and hopefully yes. it is accurate. <laughs> and then we're going to jump over to a Clarabelle card. This one is super cool. Matis is always a, a fan of Clarabelle cards. I'm always a fan of cards that are playable and I think this is definitely <laughs> a playable card. This is Clarabelle Contented Wallflower, three cost inkable, two, three, that quest for one, and she has the ability one step behind. When you play this character, if an opponent has more cards in their hand than you, you may draw a card. So giving a little bit of card draw to Emerald, these kind of effects, well, card draw effects tended to really be from Amethyst. We obviously saw it in the likes of Maleficent Sorcerer. Mm -hmm. This is a card that has a bit of a better stat line, one extra willpower. willpower. And it is conditional. You might all, not always draw a card, but it is a nice kind of comeback mechanic almost. And, and it goes back to it. what we said earlier, right? I think they still have to prioritize the gameplay of draw in Amethyst. Yeah. So they always find a twist. Need, yeah, exactly. So you want to introduce that, but it has to be a baby version of that yeah, with a yeah. condition tied to it. Uh, 
I don't understand why we need more draws in, in Emerald, if I can be honest, but, <laughs> but I'm all for that. This card is it, beautiful. Yeah, it's yeah. nice to spread it out because yeah. this could be in like a, an Emerald Amber yeah. aggro deck That's or something fair, yeah, like yeah. that, a different archetype that we haven't seen yet. So And I think she's know. looking for Horus. Uh, you think she's looking for the the Horus and the Party crowd. dancers. <laughs> <laughs> and as we mentioned, we do have a Floodborne Robin Hood. This is Robin Hood Sneaky Sleuth, 5 cost inkable. 3, 5, that quest for 1. He shifts in at 3, and he has the ability Clever Plan. This character gets plus 1 strength for each opposing damage character in play. Again, more payoff for, for that archetype, looking for damage on your opponents in Emerald. So I think this is super cool. It I think it has a lot of potential. The fact it can shift in is meaning that you can surprise your opponent. They it's can, the second Floodborne, right, we get for Robin Hood. The alone. second Floodborne, yeah. so that gives you a lot of options if you are playing a, mm -hmm. an, em, a, an Emerald Steel deck. Yeah. Your opponent won't know which Robin Hood you're going to be mm. shifting in on them if you do play a little Robin Hood. And it looks like the Pact Pac Tactics uh, action card as well, right? Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, I think something like Pact Tactics becomes a little bit better because mm. you can now have a whole deck built around kind of gaining law yes. because your opponent's damaged. So yeah. I think this is super cool. Uh, just a big shout to Illuminati. They were the ones to announce this card. Uh, yeah. You should be very proud of it. It's a beautiful card for Nicholas yeah. Cole. Yeah. It made sense entirely that you are the one to announce. So good job. Uh, very they're, happy for they're you. They're from the hometown of Robin exactly. Hood. Exactly. So they are the Hobbit Robin Hood family. Yeah. Absolutely. So that is everything for Emerald. We'll update the tracker. And now that the cards are in there, we're going to jump over to Ruby. Our second, uh, Our second Ruby, Ruby card, card. Uh, yeah. and that is Scar Traitor. Five cost inkable, 6-3, that quest for two, with one of the most specific abilities, maybe as specific as Rafiki's no damage and challenges with hyenas. Scar has the ability Long Live the King. When you play this character, you may banish chosen character named Mufasa. So I think probably the designers already knew how... <laughs> broken Mufasa the ruler, ruler of Pride Land is going to be so they're bi basically printing cards specifically to answer <laughs> that maybe not I'm not sure but yeah we don't know Scott he has a one very singular utility yes. his stats aren't bad I think if if his willpower was maybe a little bit higher maybe if he had something like if he had rush, rush he'll be like a baby Maui yeah, yeah. then it, there might be something more to yeah. it but Unless your local metagame is going to be flooded with Mufasas, which is possible. The yeah. card is super cool. I'm not sure Scar is going to be getting that much value out of his And no one would ever use this against the legendary in, uh, in Amber. Amber. Yeah, it wouldn't make not. any sense. No, 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 so no. it is almost yeah. target to the, the one in, in Sapphire. But there might be more, more Mufasas coming in the I'm future. Sure in so we're going to have solutions for that. Yes. But a great art. Love all the Scar yes. cards. They always beautiful, look super beautiful. Cool. That's all for Ruby, really. But to be honest, we had so many Ruby cards, so yeah, it makes yeah. sense. And we got Donald Duck Enchanted announced just now. Yeah. Check on the top here. Uh, but let's go to the next color. <laughs> let's go to the next color. So starting us off on Sapphire, we have Basil, Practice Detective, a one cost inkable 2 on that quest for one with support. Firstly, I'm always happy to see Basil cards. And it's even cooler getting to finally see Olivia yes. Flavisham making an appearance. Hopefully she's going to get her own card before long. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, I think it's an okay card. Support is one of those keywords at the moment that I feel is a little underappreciated. It hasn't got all of the pieces it needs to really I can't see become, <laughs> become yeah, a powerful card. But yeah. yeah, as Matteo said, it's a little bit of a, a weak one at the moment. We do have Basil Grace, Great Mouse Detective, the Floodbond card. So this is a potential shift target for that. I still think that Basil card is maybe not the strongest. It's a little no. bit situational. So I think this card lives or dies by what you can shift onto it. But that, but really, I, I, it's unfair to say, but because we're huge fans of Basil, it just feels so sad that every single Basil card for me was never yeah. a good card. The only, yeah, the, the, the only good Grey Mouse Detective card, I think, but is it's probably, not Basil. It's not Basil, but it is Hiram. Hiram, yes. One of the best cards in the game. Exactly, but it's, but it's not Basil. <laughs> it's a shame. It, 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 yeah, it's a shame yeah. we haven't got a good Basil card yet. But I live in hope. I live in hope. We do, and we want to do a theme deck about Basil. So hopefully I think we'll so. have enough cards this year. Yes, so fingers that's crossed. great to see. And yeah, hopefully we get Olivia soon too. <laughs> Next up, we have Medal of Heroes, a two-cost inkable item with the ability Congratulations Soldier. Exert, pay two, banish this item. Chosen character gains plus two law this turn. 
So it is a funny one. I think there were some questions online about why do you need to exert sync you're about to vanish? And we did find the answer, actually. I so think we, we obviously there's, out, there's we, probably yeah. different answers, <laughs> but the one we found more immediately is right on the D23 collector's uh, box that you saw. Yeah. So Oswald is coming for set six, and one of its function and its ability is you can play the item, but the item has to come to play exerted. Exactly. So if you bring Medal of Heroes, you will only be able to play in the next turn yeah. because it has to ready it and then exert and, and pay the cost of two. And there's also the Aurora as well that lets you exert yes. your items in order to look at the top card on your deck. So this is really just preventing you being able to get double duty out of an item That's in this right. case. Uh, it does work a little bit like a baby eye of the fates. Uh, in this case, it's giving two law instead of one. It is a bit cheaper, so maybe it'll, it'll be a little bit more effective. And of course, it does synergize amazingly well with Tamator because you can banish the item, give Tamator more law, and then quest with him and bring the item straight back. So I think in item decks, this is one that may well see some play. Combined with something like, well, Tamator, this, Lucky Dime, I think yeah. it's a deadly combination. And obviously, if you're wondering, this card is from wreck it Roth. It is from wreck part of the whole uh, bringing the franchise into the Zero card. Exactly. Yeah. So it's nice to see more of those wreck it Roth cards. And I think this is one that's going to look amazing in foil. I think so. You yeah, can yeah, just, yeah. Uh, you can imagine, uh, yeah. And last up in Sapphire, we have Ooh. Merlin's Cottage, the Wizard's Home. This is a one-cost inkable location, a move cost of one, a willpower of seven, and it has the ability Knowledge is Power. Each player plays with the top card of their deck face up. Which It's so, it's so interesting because <laughs> I literally had to read this two, three times. Ask yeah. Charlie, go back, read again. <laughs> yeah. I think when we read the word plays, we almost expect that it's playing a card. But all it means is... As players, we were playing the game. Yeah, whilst and this as location's soon, on Exactly. The board, as soon yeah. as this location is on the board, that effect takes place, which takes place, which means every time you will have the next card facing up. Yourself, yeah. opponents, everyone playing yeah. together on the table, which on it on itself it creates a really nice and interesting scenario. It's really fun kind of being able to know what your opponent's gonna be playing yeah. next. Being able to plan more than a few steps yeah. ahead because of that. I think and being really able fun. to play on the first turn because it's such a cheap card. So it you is, can change the yeah. game right from the beginning. It's a seven wheel power, so it's gonna last at least Absolutely. four or five or yeah. whatever turns. And it synergizes super well with Bruno Madrigal Undetected Uncle because you always know what your next card's gonna be. Yes. Works super well with the Sorcerer's Hat. So hopefully mm. we're gonna be seeing the emergence of maybe a new spin on, uh, on Sapphire Amethyst. It's a deck that has had kind of not much success so far. So maybe they, these are the cards, this is the card even, that is gonna be the one to help unlock the full yeah. potential. It is our first look on Melrose Cottage, Cottage from outside. From outside, yeah, of course. Develop yeah. Your Brain shows us the interior, now we've seen the, the exterior. exterior. So let's update the tracker with those cards for Sapphire. And then, we have a deep bunch. breath, because we have a lot for steel. A lot steel. of steel, <laughs> and it was a massive group of friends. So we're gonna start off, this is gonna be Steel's second super rare. Yes. And that is Snow White, Fair Hearted, a five cost, uninkable, three five, that quest for three. And she has the ability Natural Leader. This character gains resist plus one for each other knight character you have in play. She is a princess and she also has the knight keyword. So we, we're seeing maybe the emergence of some knight synergy, some knight decks could be on the horizon. I think it's interesting. This is Snow White, Fair Hearted. Of course, yeah. we have Cinderella, Stout Hearted. Another princess reimagined as a knight. And we do have quite a few knights in the game already. Uh, the new Donald Duck, the legendary Donald Duck who got the enchanted, he is a knight. Cinderella, knight in training, is a knight. Uh, Cinderella, stout hearted, is a knight. Goofy, knight for yeah. is a knight. There's a bunch, actually. So there are, yeah. there are loads of those. Um, so, yeah, mm. there's a lot that will potentially give her some resist. But at the same time, I don't know how powerful that effect is mm. going to be. It does rely on you having quite a few knight characters yeah. on board, which... Maybe isn't always going to happen, but I think in more casual decks, this could yep. could be a fun thing to play around. And it synergizes with what we're going to be showing next, which is every of the seven dwarves. Yeah, and the art is absolutely Beautiful. stunning. I think I said right in the beginning of this video, mm -hmm. I think she's going to get an enchanted, uh, and that's all I have yeah. to say. Second Snow White <laughs> enchanted. We'll on, see. Maybe it's coming. So the first of seven dwarfs, we have Grumpy Skeptical Knight, a three cost inkable three one that quest for one. He is also a super rare and he has two abilities. Boon of Resilience, while one of your knight characters is at a location, that character gains resist plus two. And Burst of Speed, during your turn, this character gains evasive. I'm really not sure about this card. I think the first thing to say is the first ability literally requires three cards. 
Uh, well, two two cards if you include if you consider Grumpy can give himself the buff if he's at a location. But yeah, three cards because you need you need Grumpy, you need a location, and you need a character at the a knight character <laughs> no less at the location. So it does feel a little bit. It's a lot of specific to set up. And the same with the second ability, uh, getting evasive on your turn is is fine. But there are other cards I think do it better, including a, a new seven dwarf. We're gonna yeah. see. I don't think that that what we need to serve with that evasive is coming with the other seven dwarf, as you said, not yeah. this one. Yeah. It's good to highlight that this is the third and last uh, super rare for still. Yep. So we're seeing all of them, those two that I just said, and back the Kronk that we saw with yes. the announcement yeah. of Shimmering Skies. But of course, this can be paired with something like Snow White, Unexpected House Guest, which is going to reduce the cost of this and any of the other seven dwarfs we're going to look at. And maybe when he's got some buffs from the other seven dwarf characters, he can become a little bit more potent. But right now, I just I don't see Grumpy finding much of a, a place in the current meta. Uh, but a card that I think is going to be that. quite good is Doc Bold Knight, a two cost uninkable one three that goes for one. He has the ability Drastic Measures. When you play this character, you may discard your hand to draw two cards. So first things first, the question that I think everyone was asking online is if I have no cards in my hand, can I still discard my hand to draw two cards? And we haven't had official confirmation yet, but Googly Glimmers, who is the the resident Lokana expert, a DLC judge, said that a hand is a hand whether it's got seven cards or zero cards, so you still can discard uh, your hand and draw those two cards. So you're pretty much discarding zero, but that counts as discarding, so you yeah. can draw two cards. And obviously there's other synergies around. Imagine playing that with Jafar and the wheel, or then playing a uh, Honey Ward followed by Jafar, following by drawing yeah. cards. There are ways around it, doesn't mean that is the best way, but it's a card very good nevertheless. Yeah, I think this this will definitely see some play. I think in Sealed, this is going to be a really good card, yes. for sure. Yes. Uh, that's always a metric we, we like to look at as well mm. when we've seen cards. But yeah, super cool. All of the dwarf art is just amazing. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think this one's really nice. Up next, I think this may be my favorite art of the, out of the <laughs> so dwarfs. Cute. It's Sleepy Sluggish Knight, a two-cost inkable, zero for that quest for one with Bodyguard. Um, I, I, I think on the surface, this is a card that doesn't maybe look the best. There's... Um, Von uh, Baloo Von Brunwald, sorry, it's, yes. it's one that I always struggle with. Uh, is a card with a similar stat line that guarantees you law when he's banished. Mm -hmm. um, Sleepy doesn't do that. I think the thing that Sleepy does have is the synergy. Seven Dwarf synergy. He has the Knight synergy. So if he's buffed with other, uh, or other characters are buffing him, then he becomes a little bit more powerful, which I think is where it really unlocks the value of yeah. a card like this. Because he does get from the set too, right? There's some dwarves that will give him... Grumpy will give him the, uh, the strength. Power, the strength can, so, yeah, so. so it comes from there, but apart from that, it's very okay. Uh, I think this is exactly the same dwarf and pose from the trailer, the mm. announcement trailer. He's supposed to protect or defend the half Hexo crown. Okay. But he okay. slips and someone else comes <laughs> in and grabs it. <laughs> there we go, sleepy. Uh, up next, we have Happy Lively Knight, a one cost inkable 2 1, that quest for one. And he has the ability Burst of Speed. During your turn, this character gains evasive. Something similar to what we saw with Magic Broom Aerial Cleaner. I think the fact he has two strength is very good. It means that he can take down Diablo, which is usually going to be your main target for a character with evasive mm -hmm. in Steel. So I think that is very good. But the willpower, only one. He can basically die to a sneeze, which is a bit of a shame, <laughs> especially because the next card is Sneezy Noisy Knight, a four cost inkable three four that quest for one with the ability Headwind. And I think this whole card, the flavor on it is amazing. amazing. Head, headwind from his sneeze. Yes. When you play this character, chosen knight character gains challenger plus two this turn. It, it feels like it's almost there, but it's not there. It goes back to that thing. I wish it was chosen knights and chosen seven dwarfs. Uh, yeah, maybe, I think that would to make have it a little more, bit more, yeah, more potential opportunity, or even all knights and all yeah. or all seven dwarfs. Right now, it just feels too weak, even when you compare to other cards like Mickey Mouse, uh, Thunder Bear. Thunder Bear, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I don't know. I think it's it's a very situational one. Mm -hmm. I don't like that it's conditional that it mm -hmm. has to be a knight. So it just makes the card a little bit weaker, especially its stat line as well isn't the best. Yeah. So I do love the Aurora, Aurora Borealis behind all yeah. of that. Is it yeah. the Aurora Borealis or is it the fireworks? It might be the, the fireworks, it could be both. but it I, could think, be both. I think it's the Aurora. <laughs> it definitely looks like yeah. it. Next we have Dopey Knight's Apprentice. He's a three cost inkable, two two that quest for one, with the ability Stronger Together. When you play this character, if you have another knight character in play, you may deal one damage to chosen character or location. 
Sorry, I'm just laughing because I can't see that as a helmet. I always think it's his hair. His hair. He looks like a Karen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but it is his helmet, right? <laughs> I think yes. it's his helmet. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think I think like we saw the the Stitch this set, who's a one four that does a similar thing, mm. and it doesn't require you to have a knight character in play, mm. which I think is just maybe a little bit of a better ability, unfortunately for for Dopey, but. Uh, He's got a really cool sword. It's like uh, it's huge. <laughs> it's like something from Final Fantasy. It's like something from Dark Souls or Demon <laughs> Souls. Yeah. So Dopey about to go and take down some monsters maybe with yes. that sword. And onto our last card. I think I lied. I think this might be my favorite that card. That's so cute. This is Bashful Adoring Knight, a four cost inkable three four that costs for one with the ability Impress the Princess. While you have a character named Snow White in play, this character gains bodyguard. And like with all of the other seven dwarfs, I think. They live or die by the synergy with the other mm -hmm. cards that there are. If if Bashful is getting buffed uh, with with something like Grumpy, uh, then it, he becomes a little bit more powerful. It becomes a little bit more impressive, the ability. It's a shame that it requires Snow White in play. Yeah. Like, it really is doubling down on that Snow White 7 Dwarf. We've seen synergy. that before, though, right? Yeah, with yeah. Eric and Ursula. Exactly. So that ability is only activated at a point, so it makes sense. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to the synergy. I think what I find very interesting is, again, is another... Uh, seven cards plus uh, Snow White plus seven card plus Snow White in number. So you can pick so and choose the Literally, ones, exactly. Yeah. And doing a number still is just a no-brainer with that. And they all synergize in so many different ways. Yeah, yeah. So it's very exciting. I like that they are knights now. Mm -hmm. And uh, and just bring you all the resistant knights. Yeah, the, the flavor is amazing. The art is Beautiful. amazing. I think it's a continuous art. I need to do my research because mm -hmm. I don't want to say you didn't hear this there, here. <laughs> you didn't hear here this. Oh my god, <laughs> you didn't hear this. What I'm saying here, but I think it's a continuous art. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll check, check on, yeah, on Instagram yeah. if that's the case. <laughs> Beautiful, not, nevertheless. Yeah. Nevertheless, uh, Mariana Moreno, uh, Alisa Pisoni. I think they all work on those cards. So yeah. as always, great job. Yeah. It's beautiful. And with that, let's update our tracker with Steel, who are yes. slowly catching up with the other colors now. Yeah, and then so there we go. You go. That's all of the cards we have for you today. Wow, that was certainly a lot to cover this week. Let us know down in the comments what your favorite reveal was. What was yours, Matthias? I'm gonna say Days of Duck Donald's Date. Yeah, How about I you? I love that card. I love that card. For me, it's gotta be Genie Main Attraction. I think it's a card with a lot of potential. I'm curious to see what people make with it. And don't forget to join us on our Discord to discuss these cards and other ones in the future. The link is down below. And thanks, as always, to our YouTube members who really help us out here at the channel. We really appreciate the support. If you want to become a YouTube member or you just want to find out more information, click the Join button down below and you'll see all of the details. And thanks again for watching, and as always, happy, happy questing! questing. Bye! Bye.